All right, we're building a shell in Zig with the Code Crafters platform. Uh, I don't know Zig, so I'm learning it as we go. It's been a pretty wild ride so far. But so far, what we've done is we've printed a prompt. We've handled missing commands. So if you pass a command to the shell that doesn't exist, it says command not found. We built a REPL, so you can pass multiple commands uh, without it exiting. We built the exit built in so that you can exit and you can choose the status code at which the shell will exit with. The echo command, which does exactly what it sounds like. It just prints whatever you pass to it. And now we're doing another built-in called the type built-in. This one's a little interesting. So we basically need to indicate whether a command that is provided after type is a shell built-in or if it's not existent. Okay, so uh, you can also see that they have a, they point to type cat and they say that cat is and then the path. In this stage, we'll only test two test cases, built-in commands and unrecognized commands. We'll handle executable files in later stages. Great, uh, executables are gonna be fun. The tester will check if the type command responds correctly based on the command provided. If it's a built-in, it will tell you it's a built-in. If it's not recognized, it'll tell you that it's not found. Type itself is a shell built-in command, so type type should print type is a shell built-in. So the way that I'm gonna handle this is we're probably going to uh, continue with our existing pattern, right? Where we get the command and we throw it in an else if. And we say standard.mem.equal. We're looking at u8 for our comp time type. And then we have our value for a, which is command. And then we have our value for b, which is going to be uh, type. And then if this is true, then we're going to call handle type. I don't know if we need to try it, so we're just going to call handle type and we'll figure this out. So this doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and add it. We're going to add a function called handle type. It gets some args. These are going to be a slice of const u8 and this is going to return void for now. So what we need to do is we essentially need to see if one of the types that is being passed as an argument is a type that we support. So I'm going to search for zig inline slice and figure out how to make a slice inline. Okay, nice and easy. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to say const supported types is equal to, we can go ahead and do this, and it's going to be strings that we're working with. So it'll be a slice of a slice of strings. So slice of u8. I guess these are technically const u8s. We'll try this. So we support exit, we support echo, we support type. And I think those are the only ones that we support as built-ins. Unused local constant, unused function parameter. Sweet. I guess my, my types for the inline slice are correct, which is excellent. Uh, now what we need to do is we essentially need to see if that value is contained in a slice. So we have our args. Um, so we have our args here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this arg value and check and make sure that it's contained within that slice of supported types. If it is, uh, so if um, is contained, we will print, so standard out, sorry, we'll have a little bit of cleanup to do there, but the, the short and sweet is that we'll print something and if it is not contained, we'll also print something. So with that in mind, let's figure out some slice stuff. So I want to see zig value contained in slice. Check if an element exists in a zig array. I think this is generally the most idiomatic solution, but it's possible to use contains at least. But it seems like an abuse of that function, which is really for finding sequences. Standard mem contains at least. Oh, wow. OK, so we have my array. but I think the OP posted code can be made more idiomatic by using comp time to allow it to accept types other than U32. 
value and array. Uh, okay, yeah, this, this seems fine. I'm gonna borrow this code and we will add this function right here. I do like the idea of using a comp time here. So what we can do is we can say comp time uh, and then I believe we want uh, type is T. And this would be a T. And then this would be a T as well. Am I right with that? Comp time T. I'm sorry, I have these backwards. Comp time T type. Okay, that looks promising. And then what we want to do here is see if value in array, we have a comp time type. We're working with a slice so of const u8, so that's what a string is. Uh, and then we have a value that we want to find. That value is args. And then the array that we're working with is supported types. So if that value is contained, then uh, we want to print else we want to print. So we're going to get a handle on a writer again. We'll paste that right here. And then now that we're here, we'll do writer dot print uh, comp time format. Oh, sorry, we don't want print, we want write. Writer dot write. And then the bytes that we want to write. So in our case, we want to say Shoot, what was it? Is a built-in shell. So it will, or sorry, a built-in command. Blank is a built-in command. Um, and then we need to do some formatting. So I actually don't think we want write. We probably want print. And What's the first argument to print? Comp time format const u8. Yep. So uh, it would be const u8. That's correct. And then we need some args. So our args will be an anonymous struct right here. And the value will be args, I believe. I think that's correct. Oops, sorry, that needs to be removed. This needs to be removed. There we go, that seems promising. Here. Otherwise, we have writer.print. Yep, it'll be u8 const right there. Oh. Oh, shoot, I misunderstood something. Comptime format. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't need this right here. Sorry, I misunderstood. I thought we needed to pass a type to this, but the type is implied. So what we do need to do is pass that formatting string, which is what I was seeing, and I was thinking was me needing to pass a type. So otherwise we have not found. So s not found. And then our args are any type. But in our case, our args are a struct with the word args inside of it. So pointing to our args variable, uh, feel pretty good about this. I guess one thing we probably need to do though is add our backslash ends for our new lines. Backslash n. Let's go ahead and give this a good zig build. Excellent. Array literal requires address of operator to coerce to slice type. Array literal requires address of operate. Oh, okay, we need to turn this, that totally makes sense. I have an array and we need to turn it to a slice. So to do a slice, I guess we need the address operator, which would be that. Give this another build. 
expected type const u8 found pointer to, okay, so interesting. So this is not a slice, is that correct? This is an array with an inferred size. Uh, show me slices. Oh, that is an array. Okay, okay, cool. So if we take the array and we want to convert it to a slice, what we can do is, can we just do dot, dot, dot? Will that do the full thing? Here the syntax, end m, when you want to slice to the end, yeah, zero dot dot. Let's try that. Give this a go, zig build, running into another issue on 42, const u8 found a point. Did I not change that? I'm missing something here and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Maybe you take a look at the error message one more time. Okay, I'm gonna see if we can Google this and see if we get any input. Okay, so I think I'm running into some issues with the types here. So I think what I'm gonna do instead of trying to finagle with those uh, is if I actually just take this right here and we paste this. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this function. I, I am not entirely sure what I was doing wrong there, but I, I have a hunch that if we go down this route, it might be a little easier. So supported types, and we won't call this num, we'll call this check. Oh, this is also part of the issue, I imagine. We can't do that. We need to do standard.mem.equal, and we want to check args against check. Yeah, okay, so that's that's definitely part of the issue, if not all of it. Uh, and, and it's probably not all of it in hindsight. We can paste here, we delete this, and then instead of return false, we can go here and paste this here, delete these three lines, give this a shot. Let's see what this gives us. So if we zig build, uh, standard mem equal, oh, we need to give it a type. Sorry about that. So if we come here, Go to this, we can say that we're checking a u8 slice. So now if we go here and give this a zig build, consider using try catch or if error union is ignored, we're okay, that totally makes sense. We are right here. Uh, this can fail, so we need to try that. Uh, that's also going to return. Does it return some bytes? I don't know. Let's go to definition. It returns error or void. So it does not return some bytes. Excellent. Oops. So we can go back. So we don't have to worry about catching, or we don't have to worry about the output of, sorry, we don't have to worry about the return type for print, um, but we do need to at least bubble up these errors. So we'll go ahead and bubble those up. If we run zig build function, we need to update our function type to indicate that it can return an error. My bad. So if we go here, we do this. Zig build. Handle arg, error unions ignored. We gotta keep bubbling the error up, Brad, come on. So right here, we can bubble this error up here. Zig build. Excellent. Let's give this a go. Add. Oops attempt type command. Go ahead and do this. Go ahead and push this up. Should start running our tests in the Clued. Uh, so while these are running, just as a friendly reminder, I've got a link in the video description below. Uh, it is a referral link, um, but if you sign up with my referral link, it helps like our accounts kind of connect, and then I can look at some of the code that you're writing. Uh, but also, if you do decide to do a paid plan with them at any point, I think it will save you a little bit of money, and I also get a kickback as well. So it's a win-win for both of us. Um, okay, so echo is a built-in command. Echo not found. Uh, echo is a shell built-in. 
got echo is a built-in command. Okay, so it looks like I have a couple things wrong here. Let's go ahead and fix that. So if we go to handle type, let's go to definition. Echo is a built-in command. Uh, okay, so my goodness, what is going on? wild. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is probably return this here. Um, go ahead and return. Uh, because it looks like we were printing is a built-in command, and then we were also printing not found, which makes zero sense. Uh, and it's not is a built-in command, is a shell built-in. B-U-I-L-T-I-N, all one word. Okay. Man, Zig please is having some issues. Commit M, uh, fix a few things and try again. Let this run, we'll let this push. This is a turbo test run. It's another benefit of the paid plan is you get the turbo test runs and they're a little bit faster. Uh, also, I don't think there's, not that the, Technically, you don't have to wait in a queue, or if you do wait in a queue, it's a, a paid queue, so it's much smaller. But that being said, full disclosure, um, I've done the free uh, CodeCrafter stuff for months now, and I can't think of ever having to wait in a queue, or if I have, it's very, very small. Sweet, so our test passed. Uh, so if we uh, go back to CodeCrafters here, we can see that our tests have passed, so we can mark the stage as complete. Um, if you want to, you can refactor code. And, oh, they have the test command for the CLI right here. So you could refactor and push up again and keep going if you want to. I'm pretty happy with what we have at this point. So I'm going to hit mark stage as complete. And then in the next video, we will tackle executable programs. That one's going to be beefy.